Welcome to Give It To Me Straight. I'm your host, Victoria Street. This is where we talk with individuals in the community and get some facts about what they're doing. Today, I'm here with Rick Votor, the um, Veteran Service Officer Director. Uh, hi, Rick. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so happy you're here. Um, so we have some stuff to talk today um, about um, the Chapter 115 and getting benefits to veterans and their um, dependents. But first, tell me about you. What what do you do? Where do you work out of everything? All that okay. kind of stuff. Um, I'm the Director of Veteran Services for Lemonster, Lancaster, and Sterling. Uh, I just went over 18 years wow. doing that. I want to say about five or six for Lancaster and Sterling. Um, I'm a retired Marine. Uh, I was an infantry Marine, traveled the world, uh, married my high school sweetheart, and we're both from Lemonster. We live in Lemonster. I have three boys, one in the Air Force as a pilot, one in the Coast Guard, and one's an electrical engineer. Oh, wow. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your service. I really appreciate that, and, and to your sons that are also serving. Thank you. Um, so... Let's get right into it. We're here for Chapter 115, um, the MGL law. It gives benefits to veterans uh, for certain activities and aid. What What can you tell me about it? So the cool thing about the Massachusetts veterans benefits, they're in the process of trying to relabel it because Chapter 115 is not a very, you know, doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah, it, yeah, and it doesn't and it doesn't address, you know, the fact that it's veteran benefits for both veterans and widows. So the state is trying to find a new title. Um, but as it is, uh, Massachusetts has had this program since the Civil War. Wow. Prior to the Civil War, they did land grants and things like that in the Revolutionary War, but uh, this program in its current state has been around since the Civil War. So every city and town in Massachusetts is required to have a veteran service officer by law, uh, and our job is to help administer the program for lower income veterans. Oh. So we can help with uh, reimbursement of all medical expenses, health insurance, uh, provide extra fuel. Uh, you know, especially now where gas is five, six dollars yeah. a gallon, heating gallon. So that's the program. There's some rules to it, but essentially, and we can get into that. I'm not sure how you're structured, but we can uh, talk more about that. But the basis of the program is to help lower income veterans or widows so they don't have to decide medicine or food yeah and that's that's really important that we take care of these people that have given so much for us yeah and, and a lot of people they're outliving their savings yeah because they're living much longer you know so they're running out of money and yeah. that's where we come in yeah good so much good work um so i did do a little bit of research um, so April 2021, they included another bill that plays into this that also includes um, um, benefits for diseases and death related to um, herbicides such as Asian Orange. Yep. Um, and I know there's a couple other ones. I don't know what their name, but this is for also for veterans and widows. So has this gone into effect in Massachusetts? Is this included? It has. So that's that's called your you're referencing what's called the PACT Act. Yep. Uh, the PACT Act addresses burn pits for Gulf War veterans from both uh, 1990 and after September 11th, um, 2001. It also uh, covers veterans that served in Somalia, Djibouti, Kuwait, uh, in addition to Saudi Arabia and Iraq and Afghanistan. So they have added as presumptives, in other words, the only thing they have to prove is they were there and they have the condition. So they've added a ton of different cancers. And the best way to find out if your cancer is on the list is, is just call the office Yep. Um, and, and we can help you navigate the system. So our job as veteran service officers is to help you file a claim for benefits, get you VA health care, uh, or in the case of the widow, if the veteran passed from one of these conditions. Um, so the PACT Act addresses specifically burn pits and then added two new conditions for Vietnam. 
uh, it added um, a rare blood type of cancer and it added uh, hypertension okay so and that's huge because yeah. every you know probably every Vietnam veteran I met their stress their anxiety their depression it causes high blood pressure yeah so now that's covered as a presumptive condition they just have to prove they were in Vietnam and they just have to prove they have it yeah and I feel like um, just some of the people that I've met don't ever want to admit like oh this chemical it didn't I was only there for it didn't do this it's not something that should be taken lightly they were very serious um, herbicides yeah, that they were using and, and they were strong and they there's quite a few and I didn't I didn't bring it but there's quite a few um, disabilities that are associated with Vietnam in yeah. ancient orange exposure. Um, diabetes, heart condition, Parkinson's, cancers, um, ALS, so now hypertension, and again, many, many cancers, bladder cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, respiratory cancers, um, those are all presumptive. Yeah. And what's important to know is even if the veteran wasn't connected for that when he died, if he died of that condition and he served in Vietnam, one of those conditions, we can cover the widow. The widow would then be eligible for benefits, and it's about $1,400 a month. So $1,400 wow. a month for widow benefits is a huge amount of money. Yeah, especially um, if they've, they've gone so long where they were paying medical bills. That's like right. That can really help the widow get That's out right. of that, that mm -hmm. kind of debt. Yeah. Um, so... I know we touched on some of the things that it covers. So what does what kind of aid does it cover? What kind of activities does it cover? I know you said doctor's appointments and sure. some medical bills. So, so the way the Chapter 115 program works um, is the person, if they're single, they have to have less than $8,400 in the bank. Okay, They can't have a second home, so they can only have one home, no money in the bank, You know, no, not more than $8,400. If it's a married couple, they can have $16,000 in the bank. Um, and that's a huge jump. It used to be like 3000 and 7000 But because of all the stimulus payments that yeah. came in, the state decided to raise the, th the, the minimums. Um, so we can, we can reimburse prescriptions, you know. And it's a, so, so say somebody makes $1,500. Basically, any medical expense after that, we can cover. We can reimburse them. So... Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Tufts, Fallon, you know, Pilgrim Healthcare, whatever they have for a, for a Medigap insurance, you know, we can cover that. Uh, this p program also covers people, say somebody was working for a company and he didn't have any sort of disability insurance and he broke his leg playing hockey. Well, he used up all his vacation time, he used up all his, you know, um, sick time and he still can't go to work because he has to climb a ladder every day and he's got a broken leg. So our program would be the gap to get him from his broken leg till he can go back to work. So we do that also. Sort of like a short-term disability? Yeah, exactly. So okay. it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, I hate to say it, to compare it to, it's, it's welfare for you know veterans. It's it's not welfare per se. It's an earned entitlement. They've earned this. Um, it's kind of like Department of Transitional Assistance. Yeah. It's a benefit they earned. So depending on your circumstance, will depend on how they qualify. Yeah. And they have to be honorably discharged veterans. So it has to be. Um, if they were National Guard or Reserves, they had to have been activated or mobilized and served at least uh, 90 days during wartime or 180 days during peacetime. Oh, okay. And then they would be considered veterans and be eligible. Oh, perfect. Um, so I know they, we said that they go to you to help file for this. So ha like, how does that system work? How do they end up getting these payments? How do they find out if they're eligible? Okay. All that kind of stuff. So the, f the first way they find out if they're eligible is they contact our office, 978-534-7538. Mm -hmm. um, Although we maintain three offices, uh, I only go to f uh, Sterling Friday mornings, 8 to 12, in Lancaster, Tuesday mornings, 8 to 12, and the rest of the time I'm in Lemonster, 8.30 to 4. Okay. 
uh, Thursday is still 5.30, but I have two assistants in Lemister that are fabulous, and if I'm not there, somebody else could, could help them. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's the best way. Call our office. See okay. if you're eligible. Yeah. Um, so once I get payments, one of the things I, I wanted to figure out was, like, how – does it go, is it money that goes directly to them and they spend it how they want or are they submitting sort of like invoices sure. yeah, or how great. do you track that? Just yeah, that's a great question. It is a medical reimbursement program. So the idea is they have a, for the month, we ask them to save all their receipts for the month and then on the beginning of the month, they bring us all their receipts and then we reimburse them. In some cases, they might have a $300 hospital bill and they don't have $300. Yeah. So then we would pay the hospital directly. Um, but otherwise, if you pay it, you prove you paid it, we'll reimburse you. So that's way easier than like dealing with an HSA where you're like, is this a qualified purchase? Can I do uh, this yeah. or anything? Yeah. No, it's it's going simple. directly to a person. They're like, yes, this is covered. Correct. We'll pay yeah. it for you. So that's yeah. that's way easier. It's a little bit nicer too. Yeah. That was always my big pet peeve was trying to figure out if something was a qualified purchase for dealing with other sorts of right. accounts like that. Right. Um, so I know that we talked about also dealing with widows so this is for um, veterans and then I had it as uh, it was written out in the bill as dependents so is it veterans and widows veterans dependents what what's the line with that so, so it, it's usually the the widow the dependent comes into play if they're under 18 or if they were disabled prior to the age of 18 so somebody was born with a you know severe disability, they can never work, they collect social security disability at a young age, and you know the VA would then consider them a dependent, or if they're under 18, okay, uh, or if they're in school under 23, uh, if they're in college. Um, but you know certainly the widow, and so when we say widow too, they can't have been divorced, so they have to have been married at the time of the veteran's death. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no exceptions to that. Yeah. So Social Security allows, you know, benefits if you're divorced, if you're married 10 years, but the VA does not. Okay. But that seems reasonable. Um, so we talked about how to get in touch with you. Um, you're going to be at the Lemonster office most time, but then yeah. you go to Sterling and Lancaster as well. Yeah. Um, and if anyone needs to contact you, they can reach out to the Lemonster office. Yep. And we'll put call the main Lemonster office, number up. which is on that card. Yes, I have all the information for that, so we'll put that up. Yep. Um, any other things that you want to talk about about this bill or any of the services yep. you guys so, offer? So there's also a, a Camp Lejeune um, lawsuit. So Marines or anybody that served at Camp Lejeune from 1957 or 1953 to 1987. So 1953 to 1987. Uh, if they have basically a whole slew of cancers, there's probably 15 cancers. Uh, if they have any of those cancers and they serve at Camp Lejeune, uh, they're eligible for VA disability. The widow would be eligible for, for VA disability. Uh, but they're now also able for two years from last week, they can sue to get compensation from this settlement fund. There's like $5 billion in there. So when that money's gone, it's gone. Uh, so there's a two year period and that you simply have to get a lawyer and sue. Oh, so if they, this, I think this was that commercial that's been on TV, oh, it, like uh, it keeps going on. Yeah. Um, so they should contact you to figure out where to go for this. And then Yeah, so we can, we can sort of guide them. We, so the biggest thing is they have to have a condition on the list. If they don't have the condition on the list, they don't have it. It's just that simple. Yep. Um, and then there are, you know, there's a slew of attorneys that are trying to, you know, grab their business. Yeah. Um, and attorneys are wonderful people, but um, just check with someone before you go blindly to a particular yeah, always good to double check. Yeah, and you guys have research. all the information, so yeah. might as well do, just check it out first and then do some research. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I think that's all we had for today. There's some great things happening for veterans um, and widows of, of people who have died or have these diseases. You guys are doing such a great job. You sent me all this stuff and I was like, I have to research so much stuff of what's going on because it's so overwhelming. So I'm sure other people out there are like kind of feel the same way that this is so overwhelming and, and how do I deal with all this kind of payment yeah. and th these benefits? Um, this is the guy to go to. He has the answers for you or his two assistants who are super lovely. They're awesome. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Okay. Thank you everyone thank you. for watching. Uh, we'll you. see thank you next time on, yeah. on Give It To Me Straight.